All right, let's let's do a little experiment here. Let's let's put our thinking caps on our imaginary glasses. Let's pretend you are the goalie, you are Pecorine, and I am the shooter, one of the many other players on the Blackhawks team. Now tell me, how well can you see me and the potential puck that I have when I do this? How about now? Number one, number two, number one, number two. About the same? Yeah. Woo -hoo! Hello, welcome to Hawks Recap. Game 11 of the season is in the books, and the Hawks lose tonight to the Nashville Predators on home ice by a score of 2-1, to one, which is the exact opposite score of the first game between these two clubs this season. The Hawks coming off a disappointing showing against Vegas the other night, looking to kind of turn the ship around and get things moving in the positive direction, and boy, did they start off in a positive direction in this first period. 21 shots on goal in the first period alone that matches a season high. We started to look like the team we saw in the first two games this year. Not only that, but the Hawks also held the Preds to only seven shots on goal in that first period, which was a pretty nice little gift for all you Corsi folks out there. The Hawks controlled play. They had clean entries, clean breakout passes. They were getting the puck in deep and sustaining pressure and overall just played really, really great hockey. And that was really great to see, especially after the frustrating performance in Vegas. And even though they got 21 shots on goal in the period, which is the number of shots that you really can only dream of, they put themselves on a penalty kill four times. So they did also limit themselves a little bit. Kind of, sort of. Turns out our best chances actually came on the penalty kills. First opportunity came with Saad on a breakaway. He's streaking in, got a little bit of pressure on his backside, but he tries going five hole. He doesn't really have a good control of that puck. Rene's really good at taking away the five hole on breakaways. He goes paddle down, stick flat across the ice, really takes away the bottom of the net. The top of the net is wide open if you can elevate it, but Saad with the pressure just can't get a whole lot of elevation on the puck. Goes five hole, Rene denies him. The game is still tied 0-0. We're less than a minute left in this first period. Preds back on the power play. P.K. Subban at the point receives a pass, but the puck is rolling a little bit. Gives him trouble. Schmaltz is able to steal it from him, and he is off to the races. Anisimov's trailing. Schmaltz gets some pressure on his backside. So just like Saad, he's not able to elevate that puck. Rene stops it, but Anisimov's right there for the garbage goal. Puts it in. Hawks up 1-0. Great way to finish off the first period in which you have dominated. Now coming into this game, we heard that Coach Quinville was going to be mixing some lines, blending them, if you will. The first time he's done that this season, which was an exciting prospect to kind of see how the team would play and how certain players would play without their normal partners in crime. And we got to see it in the first period, and we saw a pretty good 20 minutes of it. We had Debrinkat moving up to that first line, dropping Panic down to the second line. We had Hayden getting promoted to the third with Hartman coming down with Buma and Wingles. And then on defense, you had Seabrook and Keith getting split up. It was an interesting look, but it looked really good. Unfortunately, it didn't last. And you know, with the Preds only being down one goal after being outshot and outplayed by as much as they were in that first period, you knew they were going to push back a lot. The Preds came out firing in that second period. They still had the power play carryover from the same power play that the Hawks scored shorthanded on at the end of the first. The Hawks would kill off that power play. Once again, PK units stepping up. Unfortunately, once again, just like in Vegas, the Hawks give up a goal right after they get done killing a penalty. Duncan Keith would make his only mistake of the game in a game that he played very well in. He throws the puck, middle of the ice, the, the right play for him to do, but he misses the breaking schmaltz. Puck goes right to John Croft, and he buries it past Crawford, and just like that, we have a 1-1 tie game a minute into the second period. 
From there on, the Preds would continue to push, continue to control play, continue to forecheck effectively, and they would eventually break the tie a little past the halfway mark in this game. Preds on the power play, P.K. Subban has it at the point again. Hawks kind of run a P.K. where they have their forwards kind of interchanging a lot, kind of crossing to try and block that middle of the ice. Wingles kind of follows Subban, tracking him, gets to the center, kind of gets too far up and too far over. Hayden doesn't come over. Craig Smith gets the puck left side of the dot, pretty much wide open, body in front. Crawford can't really see anything, and Craig Smith buries it short side. Preds are up 2-1. to one. The Hawks' PK killed five out of six penalties in this game. When you get up into that six-ish range of penalties, Limiting the other team to only one power play goal is a really good night. No, that doesn't equal 85%, which is what the Blackhawks are at for penalty kill percentage this season. It doesn't match that season stat. But when you combine it with games where you're only killing two or three or four penalties and you're blanking the other team there, one out of six will get you that 85%. And it's unfortunate that... A great PK game, scoring a shorthanded goal and having a chance of scoring another one, that one power play goal they do let in is the difference in this game. I guess what I'm trying to say is this game's not on the PK unit because the Hawks have to find a way to score more than one goal. Third period begins, Preds playing very similar to the way they were playing in the second period. They may not be necessarily controlling play a bunch, but they're definitely preventing the Hawks from doing what they did in that first period, preventing the Hawks from getting a sustained pressure. They played a very sound kind of trap defensive game where they're just not giving the Hawks a whole lot of room to do anything. The Preds get a lead. They go into counterattack mode, drop back, hit you with the counterattack. They had some great opportunities. Crawford made some great saves. Patrick Kane goes to the box three minutes into this third period. Fortunately for him, a minute and a half after that, P.K. Subban gets called for cross-checking against Tommy Wingles. And the Hawks are about 30 seconds away from getting Patrick Kane back onto the ice and getting a power play and a chance to tie this game up. Kane gets out of the box. Ten seconds later, he runs into Peck Arena and he's back in the box. Chance wasted. It's all right, though, because the Hawks go back onto the power play a little over nine minutes left in the third period. This is what we've been talking about. Power play unit has to find a way to score goals in meaningful situations. This is a meaningful situation. Third period, down by a goal, looking to tie the game up. And we get nothing. You thought holding the Preds to 1 for 6 on the power play was good? Well, the Hawks just went 0 for 6 on the power play. Once again, the Hawks fail to take advantage of their advantages. Now, they didn't give up a goal on the power play like the Preds did, but that's not the standard we really want to set, is it? I'm a bit befuddled, really, because I, I, don't, I don't really know how to fix this. Because at times, the Hawks really look like they have something going. They have some good opportunities. They just cannot find a way to put the puck in the net. So I'm going to ask you, what what do they need to do? Do they need to just stop missing the net on shots? Do they need to get bodies in front? Do they need to switch up from an umbrella to something else? Or do something differently? Let me know in the comments below because I'm having a hard time figuring out why it's so hard for them to score on a power play. The Hawks make a push at about five minutes left to go in this game. Schmaltz really takes over. He had a very, very solid game. Well played on his part. Had many takeaways and great opportunities. Even had that shorty breakaway. Kane and Taze also had some great opportunities during this five-minute push. They pull Crawford to get that six skater. They don't let in an empty net. They have the full time until time runs out, but they just cannot get the puck past Rene. And after such a strong start to this game in front of your home crowd, this game ends in disappointment. And even though the Hawks had 44 shots in this game, outshot the Preds by 14, Pecorine made 43, and honestly, it didn't seem like it was that tough of a game for him. 
He didn't have to make any saves that stole the game, if you get what I'm saying. He he looked solid. He made solid saves, but he didn't have to do anything spectacular or special to hold the Hawks to one goal. The Hawks really just aren't putting bodies in front of Rene or any goalie to take away their eyes. They're, they're getting a free look at the puck pretty much every shot we get. So it doesn't even matter if we only get 20 shots or 44. NHL goaltenders aren't going to let in shots from the point that they can see all the way. Up next, the Hawks travel to Colorado to finish off the back end of their back-to-back -back here. Anton Forsberg will be a net most likely for the Hawks. For Colorado, they are coming off a loss tonight to the Vegas Golden Knights by a score of 7-0. So that kind of makes us feel a little bit better. So they're going to also be on the back end of a back-to-back. -back. Barlamov played tonight, and he usually plays pretty well against the Hawks, but it seems like he's probably not going to be playing against us tomorrow night, so that might help. But really, what's going to help is us not just playing 20 minutes of great hockey. we got to find a way to take the 20 minutes of hockey that we played in the first period tonight against the Preds and try and stretch that out over 60 minutes. If we can do that, I like our chances against the Avalanche. And with that, I say thank you so much for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I truly hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on the game and the team's effort down below in the comments section. Also, let me know what your thoughts are on the upcoming game against the Avalanche. Like, share, subscribe, do those youtube -y things if you want. But most importantly, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you again real soon.